Good evening, everyone. This is the continuation of the 2010 Fundamentals class, The Structure of Creation. This is your final class in this semester, and more on that after the class is over in our announcement section. But to begin, an intention. There is a special miracle in Kabbalah for those who study it. Although they do not understand what they study, by simply desiring to comprehend the studied material, they attract the upper surrounding light upon their souls. It is guaranteed for everyone that at the end, one will definitely attain the entire splendor prepared for him by the Creator at the very conception of creation, to give pleasure to all the created beings. Only the one who will not attain this in his current reincarnation will in the next one or later until he receives what is prepared for him. Baha Salam, the introduction to the study of the Ten Sphira. Let's uh, kind of set the stage here a little bit. We're in the final lesson of this particular semester, and we've gotten all the way down from the four phases of direct light to where we find that there are, that the will to receive, that was the only thing that was created, and actually has two desires. It has one desire for the original pleasure that the Creator gave it. It has a second desire now to do what the Creator does for the, the pleasure of the status of the Creator. We also understand that through the world of Ein Self and Self, that the creator or the creature determined to make a restriction, to restrict itself from receiving pleasure. Why? Because when it took in all of the light, everything, infinite light, into its infinite clay, it felt the difference between its own qualities, those of reception, even the desire to bestow in it, was to get the status of the creator, something egoistic, and turn right back around and said, whoa, I feel myself and the qualities of the creator as totally, completely opposite, not even similar, not even in this desire are they similar. I'm not going to receive anything unless I can do it in order to bestow. I have to work out a way to do that. I have to work out a system. I have to work out a mechanism that will allow that, and that's exactly what it did. It put together a process of slowly, slowly finding out, first of all, information, data, that it does in the world of Adam Kalmon, <coughs> Adam Kalmon, and the Partsufin of Gagalta, Absag, Ma, and Ban. It finds out about five different types of lights, being Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama, Hayan, Yehida. It then determines, as it's going through the phase of Sag, that this particular phase that it's in is the light's withdrawing and it has two reshemot of bet bet, number two, number two, or bina, bina, or bestowal and bestowal. In other words, the light, or rather the desire that the will to receive experiences in this phase is called bestowal and the light that fills that desire, the pleasure, is called bestowal. Couldn't be better. Perfect immediately sends a partsuf, makes a partsuf, sends it below the tabur. Remember where the tabur is? The tabur is, well, the thing loves to run off, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. The tabur is here. And there is Gagalta Absag. Sends a partsuf, makes a partsuf below the tabur, in between the tabur and the siyum, the conclusion of spirituality. 
and fires the light right on down there. The light, what light? The light of his toll, 2-2. Two, two. And just the same way as it acts here, this desire to bestow, huh, Malchut says, oh, no, you don't. It comes straight up. It plants itself in the parsa. It says, ah, stop right there. That's enough. Then what's going to happen is going to make a zivug and form the, the world of Nikudim in katnut and smallness. In other words, only the vessels of the stool will receive any light. That works out great. Super, no problem. Now what? Well, if it works there, all of a sudden it wakes up the desires that are below the the tabor, those of level four, three, pleasure of four and desire four to level three, and it says, let's just try. Let's see if we can't get that light below there. Let's try to do something good here. Let's see if we can't receive in order to bestow. Fires the light down there. As you can imagine, everything breaks apart. We, as we went through a couple weeks ago, the whole thing breaks apart. Couldn't be better. What had, what had happened? Actually, it was like that the Creator had entered the place of the will to receive and then broke apart and got mingled all with it. Now, what's going to happen? A world of correction. So that these parts of bestowal that are now with the will to receive, they attach themselves together. Everything attaches together. And then is going to be moved up above the parsa. Because remember, above the parsa, this is all bestowal here. What is the difference between here and everything before it? <coughs> here and everything before it, before it, everything was controlled from the top down. Here, Anything below has to go up here. It would be the same as if vessels from here had to go up here in order to receive light. What's to go up here mean? It means that if I want to bestow, if I want to be in spirituality, I have to go there. I have to, go to, I have to attain those qualities. What is to go there? It means to attain the qualities of what's there. It is to go a place. It's for me to change. And the more I change, the higher I go. So there are four worlds created for this process. Atzilut, which has five parts to it, just like Keter, Hokma, Bina, Zerampin, and Malchut, although we named them Atik and Erekanpin, which are actually developed from Keter, the gar and the zat of Keter, the bestowing part of Keter and the receiving part of Keter are Atik and Erekanpin. And then Abba Ve'ima is made from Abba Ve'ima, Abba and Ima, Mommy and Daddy. Zeranpin is made from the gar of Zeranpin. And finally, Malchut is simply a point initially, just a point. That's it. So, from this, we are going to have three specific worlds built. They all have three separate purposes. What for? Levels of aviyut, levels of desire. Those are going to be Briya, Yetzira, and Asiya. The goal is here. This is the area that needs corrected. But the fail-safe is... It can't, no light can come down here, period, ever. Everything has to come up here. In order to receive light, in other words, again, this is so important. I want to make sure everyone understands this, so listen closely. My qualities have to change. It isn't that the light will come to me. It isn't that the qualities of the Creator will come down to me. It's that I have to go there. 
What does it mean to go there? It means that I attain those qualities. And what's the key to that? The key to that is, is my desire for them. Everything is about desire. In order for me to desire, of all the things I, I desire here, I desire sleep, food, shelter, sex, family, money, honor, power, control, knowledge. I, I desire all of these these corporeal desires, and they're all down here below spirituality in this place called corporeality. Move that up a little bit. Is that better, Dave? Yep. It's important. That's fine. That's great. Why? Why was that important? Because it gives an initial sensation of existence. Uh, but there's a special desire, the desire that brings people here. They don't know why they come here. They know that they're missing something that they can't get through the satisfaction of all of those corporeal desires. So what's going to happen here? Well, that desire has to grow, that desire for something that can't be fulfilled here. That desires for the acquisition of the qualities of the creator. That desire is commonly called the desire to attain the desire to bestow. Which is like a seed, uh, a sperm. What comes out of it is something called the desire to bestow, which, of course, is known as the soul. Nishima. Sure. Greg from California is asking, is Malkut the same as the point in the heart? No. No, no, no. Malchut is not uh, the same as the point in the heart. Malchut is actually the desire to receive, the will to receive in all of its glory, the Shekinah. Corrected in its corrected form is called the Holy Shekinah. What is it really? It's the will to receive in order to please the Creator. Greg, think of it this way. Uh, we talked about this. I gave you a lot of examples. Uh, but my goal here, my goal here is to please the giver. Let me put it to you a different way. Let's say that it's my father's birthday. And please, remember, it's just an example. This isn't spirituality. This is corporeality. But it's my father's birthday, and I want to give him a gift. And I know he loves football. I know he loves traveling. Maybe I'll give him tickets to a game. Maybe I'll send him on a trip. Maybe I'll give him a new car. Whatever. Instead, he, I walk up to him and say, Dad, I, I just want you to have the best birthday you've ever had. My only desire is that you be pleased. And he looks at me and says that the only thing, the only thing that will please me is if you take this check for $10,000. Well, in other words, the only thing that will please me, son, is if you're happy, is if you have what you need. Now the question becomes, can I take that in order to please him or just in order to please me? In other words, do I have the intention? Am I receiving it with the intention to bestow? In other words, only in order to please him, with the express intent to please him? Or is there something in there for me too? Why would I accept it? It sounds impossible because you see, he's after my joy. I have to enjoy it too. So it seems confusing here. This is what dictates the difference between an intention and a desire. Uh, let's stop there, though, before okay. we go much further. I, I, I want to be, be able to uh, get into the uh, text a little bit, William. So let, let's go ahead and, and start on the second page at the bottom. We're going to be reading from the second to the last paragraph on page... 135 from Wondrous Wisdom. So what is the difference between the ascending ahop, vessels of reception, and those which are reached by the light coming below the parsa? The difference is qualitative. When the ahop goes up, it is used as a vessel for bestowal, not for receiving. Its main feature of receiving is removed during the ascension. In other words, instead of being used as a vessel of reception, a hop, it is used as Galgalta Vianayam, vessels of bestowal. 
This adds something to the world of absolute, but it does not correct the Ahop fundamentally. While ascending, the Ahop does not use its own light, but the light of Galgalta Vianayam. In addition to Ahops that can be raised to the world of absolute, there are many Kalim vessels left in Bia that cannot be raised. This is because they are not combined with Galgalta Vianayam. What can be done in order to correct these Kalim? Just like the Shevrat Ha Kalim breaking of the vessels in the worlds, a Shevrat Ha Kalim in the souls is produced. For this purpose, Malhut of Ensof, nothing more than a purely selfish created being, devoid of altruism and in a state of restriction that it accepted on itself, is added to the vessels of Galgalta Vianayam of the zone, of the world of Absolute. Here there will be such a combination of Kalim de Kabbalah, reception, the vessels of reception, with Kalim de Hashpa'a, vessels of bestowal, that naturally such a part suf will break into smaller particles. Further, the separate sparks of altruism and selfishness will combine, paving the way for the correction of Malhut by means of these same particles. And so, after the world of Absolute enters the state of Katnut, Malhut of the world of Absolute ascends to the level of Ima, Bina, of the world of Absolute, and there gives birth to the world of Bia, Berea, by making a Zavug de Aviut Bet, level two. After the second Zavug of Malhut on the Aviut Gimel, level three, the world of Yetzira is born. Then the world of Asiya is brought about after the third Zavug of Malhut on the Aviut Dalit, level four. After all this, a fundamentally new part suf is being created in Katnut with Galgalta and Ayam, the vessels of the stole. The ahap of this new part suf in the future Gatlut will be Malhut of Ensof itself. This part suf is called Adam Harishan. Yes, it's absolutely correct to think that this is the Adam, the Adam, that's mentioned in the Torah in uh, Bereshit, Genesis. What are we talking about here? As you just heard, these, these worlds are being created based upon the level of Aviyut, on the level of, of the strength of the desire, the, the will to receive pleasure. We had the question just a minute ago, what is Malchut? Malchut is, is literally this complete, to completely, totally selfish will to receive at this point. It's in the middle of the process of creation, not at the end of it. The whole point is, is to get the process of creation finished. What's the process of creation? That is when there is a partnership between the creature and the creator. What is that partnership? That partnership is that the creator wants to bestow and the creature wants to bestow by receiving. Hence is in what's called Hishtafut Zurah, equivalence of form with the Creator and its properties, and it utilizes its will to receive this desire to get pleasure only as a tool. That's it, just a tool to be able to receive pleasure. Pardon me, to be able to receive pleasure in order to bestow to the Creator. That's it. That's all. So, <clears throat> there's going to be a way to be able to correct these down here. There's going to be a new part so First of all, it's going to be, be uh, born in spirituality. This part suf is going to be called Adam HaRishon. It's going to have everything above the parsa in vessels of bestowal except for one point that is below the parsa, which is, as they just mentioned here, the whole problem couldn't be better, actually, because you see, Adam Harishan, Adam, Adam, 
in Gan Eden in the Garden of Eden, it, it actually is only working in vessels of bestowal. With its vessels of reception, Hava or Eve is not operating at this point at all, period. And then in, in the Bible, we read all about all of this mess about the apple and the snake and all of this stuff. And, of course, there's quite an event that occurs. And there is a fall, right? Very important, significant event. That fall, what's happening here is it's describing the breaking, the identical breaking that occurred here in the world of Nicodem when it received the light below the parsa. Everything breaks. Let's answer a couple questions, then we'll read some more, because I want to get to more of the text tonight. Okay. Sam from Sydney. What I don't understand is, when do we reach Ma and Ban if at Sag we break into the lower worlds and everything else? There's no we here, first of all. This is spirituality. Where is we? Let's go down here. Where is we in this picture? There is no we here. None. Zero. Okay, all the way down to here. The we is here. In fact, I think I have an even better drawing of it in here. And maybe not. I thought we had one that had little uh, figures on it even. Yeah, we do. Good job, Riggin. Folks, uh, this is our last class. I want to make sure to uh, let you know. If you knew what uh, the volume of people, uh, you see William, you see Dave, and you see myself on the broadcast, trust me, it's, it takes a lot larger effort than this. We have our executive producer that, that produces all of our broadcasts. Sitting, uh, she's in Philly right now, I believe. Yes, that's true. Uh, Madian, you've heard me mention her name many times on the broadcast. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. We, we have four, uh, five more people in, in. No, we have four more there that are translating into Spanish, that are moderating and, and passing through questions and all sorts of things. All right. People in the tech room here? We have people in the tech room in here. Robert, uh, of course, is, is, is back there along with Sandra. And who Bill, else? Is, Bill's is back. There. Bill Becker back there? Yep. Yeah, sure is. We have Riggin here. We have Judy here. We have uh, virtually everyone. Has, puts in efforts into these lessons every single week. In fact, there are too many people to to mention here, but everyone puts in effort to them, and they uh, do that for one reason and one reason only, and that's to be able to bring all of this to you, uh, to allow you to be able to to uh, fulfill this strange desire that's come on that can't be fulfilled through the normal corporeal means. It can't be fulfilled by by just strolling into my church or my synagogue, or it can't be fulfilled by uh, any of the, by getting some kind of higher education or anything like that. Let's come back down here now and we'll see what I was talking about. So he, here we are down here, and we have four levels, the still, vegetative, animate, and speaking of existence down here. And actually, we are... Here, on the globe, on the world. There was one tiny spark, one tiny spark of light, Conier Dakik, that fell below the seum. And it's the result of that, everyone wants to talk about all the light that they receive and all this. This one tiny spark of light created this entire universe. It's, it's a little beyond one's realm to imagine what light is truly like yeah. um, and, and what it would be like to actually be a, a Kabbalist and to be able to sense something like this. It's... it's beyond the pale, it, it wouldn't make sense to the corporeal mind. Um, so, bottom line is, you shouldn't think of any of this. You should think of all of this and above through the four phases of direct light, the phase of insof, zoom, all the way through Galgalta, Absag, Ma, and Ban, through all of this. You should think of it as a system that was built 
for one reason and one reason only, and that's to create the creature. That's why we call this lesson the structure of creation. It creates something that's in the process now of developing, called a Dham Habershon. Think of the Dham in the state right now as Humpty Dumpty, broken apart completely. There is a solution. What's the fix in the deal? What's the fix? The fix is to be able to put the pieces of Humpty Dumpty back together again, to rebuild this part so this single entity called Adam Harishon, or Adam, and for it to be working properly in a manner to which it can receive, and it does it under the express condition that it does it to bestow. William, let's continue on. Well, let's take another question or two first. Okay. We do. Sure. Almir from Brazil. Mm -hmm. It was said that in the four phases of desire evolution, in the fourth phase, there are the restriction by the means of screen, Masak. of the screen, Masak. I want to know in which phase there are the barrier called Moxome. It's two different things. There's more than one barrier, actually. The primary barrier you're talking about, there's a section called Madrokipot. It's a section that's from the middle of Yitzira down to Asiya, Klipot. And the best place to consider Maxom, really, that you'll be able to understand the best would be right here. Maxom. What you're talking about is sensing spirituality, to be able to sense something. Because you see, there's a process that one goes through. To be able to sense something spiritual means to be able to attain equivalence of form with it. There's called single concealment and double concealment and revelation of fear and then revelation of love. So there are different forms of concealment and those concealments, uh, single concealment is that I understand that there's none else besides him, meaning that there is no other force on, in the universe that does anything except the creator. But the second part of that is that the creator does good to both the good and the bad. I don't see that part. In fact, in my corporeal eyes, I see people getting murdered and raped and everything else all over the planet. I don't see that part. Second, there's second concealment, which means not only do I not see that part, I don't even see the part about that there's none else besides him. I don't buy it. When do I enter these states? When I begin to understand not that there's none else besides him, but that I'm being concealed from this. I'm under a concealment. Something is preventing me from seeing what's called truth. What in the world could it be? So single and double concealment lie where? Where, where, where you have klipa here? Mm-hmm. Take another question. Okay. Uh, Tal from D.C., how do I attract the reforming light in a way that it builds me in the smoothest way? That's a great question, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That opens up uh, pretty much everything, doesn't it? I have three tools that I'm able to use to draw the, the uh, reforming light. Three. Number one, the least important is the Rav, the teacher. The teacher is the guide that helps us to be able to stay on course because we have a path and we want to go on this path to spirituality and let's say it's here. Back out, please. Here I am. And the problem is if I don't stay 
if I just get just one step off, every step that I take actually goes further from spirituality, not closer. What the Roth's job is, is he yanks me back over. Keep me on course. Keeps me back on course. Mm. So I have the Rav. One of the neatest parts about the Creator. Really cool. He gave us an instruction manual. In fact, several. He gave us instruction manuals at different times. Depending on where our level of desire was, at the level of desire of very, very small of you, he gave us the Torah. It's almost incomprehensible what the things mean in it now. We're taken quite physically, quite corporeally, as opposed to, to spiritually. When back then it wasn't. Certainly, things like the mitzvot were kept both spiritually and corporeally. But with the growth in, with the growth in our youth, there needed to be new new sources for the same same material. Hence the book, the Zohar, written by Rashbi. You're not going to see any difference in the material in it and in the uh, Torah. If you're in spirituality, you see almost no no. Uh, lightness in it if you just sit down and read the Zohar and then you sit over and, read, and you switch over and you read, say, Bereshit. It speaks a little bit about it, but it talks about lions and eagles and, you know, I mean, my gosh, what's all this stuff, you know? And, and, uh, lizards and lizards, frogs yeah, and all, all kind of stuff. All sorts of things in it. What they are, I don't know. I don't know. I just know that it's not the Torah. Well, what happened to the Torah? And then, of course, there is the Arbi. He was the author of several works. His greatest would be The Tree of Life. And wrote for a very, very given period as well. Of, in other words, what's a period? What's time? Well, it's growth and desire. And he wrote for, for the points in the heart of that period. That period, what would allow them to progress. 20th century, it was Baal HaSalam. They wrote comment wrote the Talmud Esther Spirit, wrote uh, introduction to the Zohar. It makes it a lot more comprehensible uh, to combine these two. He really and truly wrote for for the and for the same same people on a different level of Aviut now, but there is a <coughs> a major fact in all of it. It all says the same thing. Every bit of it. So, I have to have something special here. It's called the sources. Books. Primary books that we study out of are the Zohar, Talmud Esther Sfirot, some of the writings of Rabash, because... Uh, of his beautiful writings with regard to um, love thy friend as thyself. His beautiful writings regarding group work and group stuff, work, right? which is an absolute necessity. Uh, and then finally, we have one other thing. We have something called the group. All three of these things are absolutely essential. All three of them, absolutely essential. But this third thing, it's going to give me what I need. It's going to give me the one element that ties everything together. You see, i got two problems. The first problem is the creator is in, is in complete, total, utter concealment. What creator? You've seen me do it before. Is he under the table? Is he under the paper? Where's the creator? What creator? I don't see a creator. Creator's in complete total concealment, 100%. I don't see the, 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 the creator smiling right there. That's not, that's not a creator. That's Dave, remember? That's Dave. I don't see anything like that. 
And yet they tell me that I have to attain the qualities of this imaginary thing that they're calling the creator. It's a problem. They tell me, though, that there's something that I need to learn to do. They tell me that if, if, here I am, that, first of all, the career's in concealment, so I can't worry about, remember what bestowal is that I, I want to, I'm happy to receive or, or give to the creator if I could, but the whole goal is, at the end of the day, is I want the benefit to go to the creator. The benefit goes to him. My whole goal is the benefit for the creator, whatever the creator wants. In other words, to have concern for something other than myself, which is called the will to receive, which is the state in which we exist, like an ocean that we're dropped into. I don't have a creator to work with here. He's in concealment. What do I have? I have a friend. Now, I don't want to get too deep into this, but what is a friend? A friend is not a person. A friend is the point in the heart. The point in the heart in him or him. The desire to attain the ability to do what the creator does. Is it egoistic? You bet. It needs correction. But it's a spiritual desire. And it's all I got. Whoop. I start out. I start out with a certain amount of desire. My problem is that the key, Kabbalists tell us, the key to entering spirituality is reaching a level of desire in me toward the goal. And this given level of desire, I don't know what it is. So I have to want to attain these qualities of the creator more and more and more. Here's the problem. How do I do that? How do I begin to gather more desire for spirituality, more desire to do what the creator does, more desire to bestow, another way of putting it, more desire to love? Well, let's say I need 10 pounds of desire. I need 10 pounds of desire. <laughs> Dead, government, I've only got one. I've got a real problem. 10 pounds to enter spirituality. Yeah, I've got to have 10 pounds to actually be able to enter spirituality. I've only got one pound. But what if... I have some friends out here. Remember, desire, point in the heart, the desire to do what the creator does, that I connect with in such a way that I feel those desires as if they were my own. And each one of them had a pound. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whoa, I got 11 pounds. Well, I'm in business. In other words, let's be a little bit more blunt about this. I have to feel the point in the heart that's in here encased in this corporeal shell. What is it? It's a desire. Now, there's a lot of desires here. There's desires to eat, desire to sleep, desire for money, desire for everything right here. Guarantee you. There's also a point in the heart in here that's a desire to do what the Creator does. I have to feel this desire in here as if it's my own. That's called love thy neighbor as thyself. How do I love myself? Boy, I want me to get everything I got. <laughs> anything that I want, I want me to have it. Do anything to please myself. I'll do anything to please me, you bet. 100%. If that means that you're sick, it'd make me feel good for you to be well. Hey, I'm going to take you to the hospital right now. Why? 
you're my friend. What does that mean? You give me pleasure. Okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm, I don't want to source of the, the, the pleasure hurt. I'm going right. to take you. Point is, I have to find a way for me to be able to connect. In other words, I need an environment. I must have an environment that influences me. And, and we see this every single day. It happens all the time. It's all over the place. This isn't just in, with regard to spirituality at all. We don't realize it's happening. We just I just think I have more desire. I don't sure. realize that it's the desire of the of the environment that I'm feeling. I don't see it that way. No. I don't realize that 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 the moment that I I walk onto a college campus as we spoke of earlier and all of a sudden I start thinking, "Boy, how do I wish, you know, I I start I visit with some students on the way through, and all of a sudden I start thinking about what it'd be like to be back in college and to be taking another course again right. and all that. And all. what happened? All of a sudden I begin to be influenced by the environment. I said the story before about when I moved here to Illinois ten years ago, and began began to uh, uh, be around my father-in-law up here and the people here that 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 uh, uh, he ran around with, and they all fished. And I hadn't fished since I was a little boy, but all of a sudden, guess what? I'm back fishing again. And you went out and bought your pickup truck, too. <laughs> and had all, had all of uh, all of my fishing gear and everything else, of course. You know, and you spend money on all this stuff and all this. What happened? I was influenced by an environment that gave me the importance. What does an environment do? It prioritizes my goals for me. It prioritizes what is, in, is the most important compared to what is the least important. So with regard to spirituality, with regard to, my, with regard to my goal to attain the qualities of the Creator, the only environment that's going to help me out at all is an environment that places it at the absolute most important thing that I could possibly do. It's an absolute must. Only that way, because here's the problem. Remember I said that I, I was born with one pound of desire for spirituality and then all of a sudden something happens, something causes me to feel it. And this happens to us in corporeality too. Right. I can promise you at your age that you're thinking about retiring one day, right? One day. <laughs> one day. <laughs> at the same time, at the same time, when you were four, you didn't think much about it. But that desire appeared. Trust me, I'm further along than you are, and I definitely think about that one day. But I didn't feel it when I was a child. Something changed. The same happened here. I always had that point in the heart, as does every single person on the entire planet. That desire is there. But in some, it's lit up. In other words, in some, they feel it. In others, that they don't. Those that don't, they are strictly with animal desires, period. For food and sleep and sex and money and power and honor and knowledge, corporeal or animal desires. Yeah. Why is it called that, by the way? Because the level of spirituality is called man. Adam was a man. What's a man? A clee with the masach, with the screen, where this act can take place, as you all already know what that is. So you have to have all three. The group is the most important, but you have to have all three. You have to have all three. Must. You have to have an environment that works in this manner. If you do, you have a game plan, the sources, the books, you have to have someone that keeps you on track because, trust me, the will to receive is always wanting to go off track all the time. It knows what it knows, and it knows what's best. It rarely knows what's best. It just knows what will make it feel the best. That's all it knows. In order to advance, it knows what will make it feel the best that makes it advance. And then, of course, the Rav, the uh, game plan, and then finally, the influencing factor that will allow one's desire to grow to the point that it has to do, which is a set point. How large is it? Truth, it's simple. Larger than all the rest. 
it has to be the most important thing to me. It has to be an absolute necessity that this occur within me. It isn't like that. It has to grow to it. And I have to be willing for it to grow to it. So I have to put my what's called half shekel into the deal. I have to put my effort. And then the rest of it is done for me. I get help. No one can achieve this goal without that help. Let's answer another. By the way, that was a great question. Let's answer. That was a very good question. No, let's take another one. Moses from Venezuela. How do we know the difference between to take pleasure and to please? How do we know the difference between what? To take pleasure and to please. Oh, no, you don't. Not a chance. Don't even know what bestowal is. What is this quality? This quality, what's his name? Moses? Moses? Moses, it is not here. It doesn't exist here. There's no such thing as the goal of bestowal in corporeality. Why? What is corporeality? By definition, Kabbalists define corporeality as the total, complete absence of, of anything spiritual. In other words, anything with regard to bestowal. This is the absence of it. He has another question. What step is Malkut in the ladder, on the ladder? Malkut. What step is Malkut in the ladder? The ladder, the of 125 course, steps. Right, there's 125 steps, but it depends on where you're, where you're talking about. And the, what is the ladder? The ladder consists of five worlds. Five worlds. Times. Um, times five. Parts, parts of theme. theme. Times five spirit. Being Keter, Hokma, Bina, Zerampin, and Mahud, of course, there's ten within the five because of Zerampin that has six spirit within it. So, within each given part sulf, there is a Mahud. What is the Mahud part of it? It is the complete total will to receive. It is the largest level of Abiyud within each given, given world and within each given part sulf. So, you can't look at it in terms of where it is on, 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 the, on the ladder as he means it. The ladder is 125 levels, and there are a lot of different levels of Mahut in there. Next. Uh, Dorothy from Ontario would like to know where she can find wondrous wisdom to download. Find it on the site. Uh, Riggin Library? I think it's in the Kabbalah Library, I think. It's in, it's in, or it's in, in the, the, uh, the books, not library, but... It, Ask on the form on Riggle and stick the link on for you. She'll dig it out and stick it on there for you. Next. Javier from Houston. I have the impression that even if I, we understand little of nothing of what is read or said, the rep repetition of Kabbalistic Hebrew words causes something internally. Javier? Javier? Does that sound right? J A V I R I R. Javier? Javier. It's a very good question. I'll tell you what. I personally don't care if you, uh, if you learn every single thing here or nothing. I could care less. The only thing that's important is drawing the light that reforms, called Or Hosea. The only thing that's important. Now, you have an opportunity to do that. You're, you all are all getting ready to go to the intermediate course, which has a lot to do with preparation of the Zohar study is there, and also Rabash articles on, on group. Preparation on the Zohar is the funnest, I can promise you. Plus, you'll have uh, be being taught by one of the neatest guys. You'll great teacher, probably one of the best teachers in all of B'nai Baruch. Been with B'nai Baruch 13 years. His name's Avi Yusufer. He'll come to you from, from Israel. But I can promise you there's nothing more important than those Rabash articles, those articles on group. Why? Because they begin to explain to you really what works here. Becoming responsible for everyone else. When, uh, By the way, why would this person give me the importance of the goal? Why would... Now, I need the importance of the goal. Why should Dave do that? 
You see, what I'm going to do is, Javier, listen to this. I want to focus on Dave. I don't care what I have to do in order to make sure that the goal is really important to Dave. Why? So he'll give that influence to me. How much influence? All that he's got. Along with every single solitary other person that's studying Kabbalah with B'nai Baruch. To date, that's, that's a lot. Anybody have a clue? How many now? What are we up to? I don't know. No, that's just the learning center. I was thinking altogether. I don't know. It's in the hundreds of thousands minimum. Anyway, what I'm after here is influence. The only thing that gets me into spirituality is when my desire gets large enough. So I've got to have your influence. So I want the goal to be really, really important to you, very important to you. When you start being able to relate to your friends like that, I don't care. You don't have to be sitting in the same room with them. It can be virtual. All the different students that are studying with you right now, right now, each one of those contains a point in the heart. Each one of those is here because they have one goal in mind, and that's it. Imagine how big your desire would be if you felt all of that desire as your own. But they aren't going to do it for free. There's a term, by the way, for that. When each and every one became responsible. Do we have that? Dig that out. You have page 252. 252, I think. When each and every one become responsible. It's called Arvut. Each and every one becomes responsible for the other. Did you find it? Great. You want, to, you want to read the first Let's paragraph? Let's go to William. Let's read this. Read the first paragraph. This is to speak of the Arvut, mutual guarantee. When all of Israel became responsible for one another, because the Torah was not given to them before each and every one from Israel was asked if he agreed to take upon himself the mitzvah of loving others in the full measure, expressed in the words, Love thy friend as thyself. This means that each and every one in Israel would take it upon himself to care and work for each member of the nation and to satisfy all their every needs, no less than the measure imprinted in him to care for his own needs. My goodness. Kind of says it a lot better than I could, didn't it? Yeah. Oh, Salam wasn't too bad at writing, was he? Let's take another question. Dorothy from Ontario would like to know why she can't download the Zoar. Zoar's there to download, isn't it? Kabbalah.info, you can download it for free. Yeah. Let's take a okay, question Sal about the class. Salvador from Salvador. Um, when you say Rav, are you talking about Ari, Baal Salam, or Lightman? Our, well, they're all Ravs. Uh, when you're talking about the sources, you're talking about um, Yari, Baal Salam, um, Rashbi. When you're talking about the Rav of, of our group, it's, uh, it's Rav Lightman. Next. Mm -hmm. uh, Lewis from Guadalajara. How can you... Wait a minute. Before we continue, it's important to understand what happens here. There's a direct connection. For instance, Baal, Baal Salam. Too small. Well, that puppy's thick. Yeah. We need a new pad. Can you get that? Okay, so what there is. There is a chain. Kabbalah is passed down from Kabbalist to Kabbalist student. From Kabbalist to Kabbalist student. And it actually goes back up this way, from Baal HaSalam all the way back through 
from Kabbalist to Kabbalist student, all the way back through Yari, Rashbi, uh, all the Kabbalists of the Torah, including uh, David, David, Mo Moshe, Avraham, everyone, all of them, every single one of them. So you shouldn't think of this as a person, so to speak, but rather a culmination of all that came before him on the higher level of Avayud. Next question. Okay. Uh, Lewis of Guadalajara again. How can you see or feel the Creator? How can you feel we the We spoke creator? about this. To attain his Tavutra, equivalence of form with his qualities, that's the only way. Roxana from way. Connecticut. Love thy neighbor as thyself, only with other points in the heart or for every other person? At first, only other points in the heart that are, what's only other point? Everyone has a point in the heart. Everyone. The point is, is it awake or not? In other words, is someone actively seeking the goal or not? Um... At first, them. Why? Because it's so incredibly hard to connect with those that are not, that aren't, aren't in the goal. A lot of times, uh, the influence goes the other way. They'll influence you to what's important to them instead of the other way around. Uh, later, it will become easier. But for now, well, those that aren't awake, let's, there's no coercion in spirituality. Let's leave them alone. They'll wake up when the Creator wants them awake. You were saying earlier to try to give your friend the importance. It's hard to think about. Every it's hard enough to try to think about it's hard, ten, ten right, people, ten right? people I other mean, than yeah. You know, think yeah, about everybody. Let's think about seven billion. Why not? Yeah, yeah. very difficult. Cynthia from Virginia Beach, what will happen once Adam Harishan reincarnates? Adam Harishan uh, doesn't reincarnate. Adam Harishan is a part suf. It's a spiritual entity. What do I discover? It's like a hologram under which we, we exist. And we saw here. What do I discover? Here I am. Here's me. What do I finally discover? We talk about Kilim vessels, right? We discover down the road entering spirituality, that actually, this is not me. We discover that these are my kidim, my vessels, and that this thing is me, called Adam HaRishon. Next question. Okay. Um, Matt from Staten Island. What is the follow-up course I should take after this one? You're hearing the announcements. We've got one for you in just a few minutes. Okay. Sammy from New Jersey. Does Kabbalah teach that the stories of the Torah are just branches to explain the upper worlds? Or did the events actually happen in this world and also they explain the upper world through branches? I get this all the time. Was it really uh, uh, King David? Saul Solomon, people really exist. It's very, very difficult I, uh, to answer in a way that's comprehensible at this point. The only answer I would say is yes. These are real people. If you're talking about uh, about uh, Moses or Abraham or Yitzhak or y'all called it Isaac, Jacob, all of these characters that were in the Bible, when you read them as stories and nothing more than that, and you read it as history and nothing more than that, I'll put it to you this way. They were just as real as you are, just as real. Next question. Cynthia from Virginia Beach. When you love your neighbor as thyself, are you learning unconditional love, the quality of the creator? No. No, you're not. Um, but it's a step toward it. 
there's a step toward it. There is a unconditional love is something entirely different. Unconditional love is not only has the creator never done anything wrong to me, he's never done anything wrong to anyone else. This is something entirely different. You'll talk about it next semester. Hmm. Akina from Mississippi. The point in the heart, loving my neighbor as myself, is this what is considered Israel? Israel. Yashar Kel, straight to God. People think of it as a place, or Jew, Yehudi, is a, um, as a race of people. Truth of the matter is, if you looked at Abraham's genes, they would be identical to any other Persian on the planet who right now happen to be the sworn enemies of Israel. You, we don't look at these things corporeally, only spiritually. What we're talking about here is Israel is the... Why is it called straight to God? Because it's actually describing those souls that have the desire to do only one thing, and that's to attain the ability to bestow, no matter what that takes. Um, that would mean that a person such as myself uh, under that definition that grew up uh, as a deacon in a church and teaching Sunday school and all sorts of things that by that definition as the desire to want to to actually attain the qualities of the creator that would be called Jewish we're talking about not about a race not about uh, not saying that someone's special because of who their mother or grandmother was but because of what desire that they have in them that's the important part. What are they trying to attain? What is it that's important to them? Which desire has the highest importance, the highest possible priority in them? With that, we're running just a little bit behind. Sorry about that, Marianne. Uh, William, if you would, we have some announcements. Instructors and moderators are waiting to answer all of your questions that were not answered during the class at the student forum. This is your final Structure of Creation class in this semester. We will have one more articles class about the inner work in Kabbalah on Wednesday, June 30th. Then the intermediate semester will start on Wednesday, July 7th. Again, Wednesday, July 7th. There is no need to enroll or do anything special. Just sign in on July 7th like you have this semester and you will automatically be connected to the right lesson. So this continues on at July 7th, the same way you've done it all through this semester. Please note that the American and European classes are being combined for the Sunday classes. The Sunday course will only be taught at 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, so be sure to check what that is in your time zone. The Wednesday intermediate classes will stay on the same schedule that you are used to. 8 p.m. GMT for the European section, 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time for the American one. If you like what you've received from the Learning Center's free courses, then we encourage you to write a few words about your experience in a testimonial, how you felt before starting at the Learning Center, and how you feel now. Your testimonial might get chosen to be published on the Summer 2010 course sign-up page. The moderators are posting the link on the chat window. Is that correct in there in the tech? We will also post it on the forum, and you can send your testimonials to lc at kabbalah.info. We invite you to tune into a brand new Kabbalah web TV channel at 9.15 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 
right after class tonight and every Sunday and Wednesday. Go to tv.kabbalah.info to watch five hours of live primetime programming designed especially for students of the Learning Center. You can send messages, call into the show live by phone or Skype, or submit a video message and question. Remember, we've been talking about this for some time, the Mega Congress that is coming up on July 23rd through the 25th. The theme of that Mega Congress is Building the Spiritual Environment. You can find information. You remember we've been saying details to follow. Well, the details are here. You can find information about the schedule and the locations that will be participating by clicking on the Mega Congress banner on Kabbalah.info. That's the first page as you go to www.kabbalah.info under the heading, What's New? You'll see a link for the Mega Congress. We hope you will all join in, either with a physical B'nai Baruch group or virtually with all the other BB students. Our next Fundamentals course, summer 2010 semester, will start on Wednesday, August 4th. We encourage you to invite any of your friends or family who express interest in Kabbalah or in deep questions about life. For more information and to register, visit www.kabbalahlearningcenter.info. Mike? We had a mistake, didn't we? I read Cynthia's question wrong. Sorry about that, Cynthia. She's a, she actually wanted to ask, what will happen once Adam Havershan reincorporates, not reincarnates? <laughs> That's a little different. In other words, what happens when Humpty Dumpty's put back together again? It's called Martikun. It's called Final Correction. And it's obviously exceptionally... Uh, special event, you're talking about the final correction, not just of one individual form, in other words, not just your career final correction, but the correction of all, all parts. And Kabbalists tell us that there is something after that. What? We don't we know. We don't know. No idea. I wish I could tell you, but it would be just the rumor that I know and not what uh, anything that I would ever know about. Um... Again, we want to thank you for staying with us for these last 10 weeks. It's been very, very special 10 weeks. You've got a whole new set of lessons coming up. They're eight weeks long, very, very special lessons. Both of them, uh, the group work with the, the articles of Rabash, along with the uh, with, with uh, Ikal Sahavi, along with Avi Yusofer's lesson on uh, preparation for the state of the Zohar, these are really, really important classes, and they will definitely help you to advance. I would suggest uh, reviewing any of these courses that you like, that, uh, that uh, Asaf gave you, or myself during these last um, 10 weeks, if you like, prior to that period. We won't have a class next uh, Sunday. The next Wednesday will be your last class. That will be with Asaf. What is Asaf doing? Uh, they're working work three lines. They're working three lines. Outstanding. You'll find out more about how, how all this comes about. So until then, uh, we wish you luck. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Good night.